the uh, capabilities and see which uh, capabilities these operational uh, the, these which which operational activities these capabilities become the basis of. So again, the rate, to form this view, we start with the architecture. It specifies capabilities, and the capabilities could be refined by other capabilities. And then finally, the capabilities uh, become the basis of operational activities. And what we're basically looking for here is the operational activity and the performer performing that operational activity. So again, this view is going to look a lot. You can see a lot of consistency here across the views. Again, the header and, and footer, um, the uh, description statement. And again, in this particular case, it's a hierarchy of the capability, the operational activity that it's the basis of, and who's performing it and the description of each of those elements. Okay, here's another capability. Okay, this capability. Okay, uh, one thing I uh, just also mentioned that the footer, the footers also contain uh, the, for example, your page number. But over here on the right hand side, you get the date in which the those uh, views were produced, so that you can keep track of if your views or if you modify the views. You keep track of the dates that those views represent. Okay. Um, now, correspond. That's on the operational side. On the system side, we have the system views and the services views. So let's talk about the system views first. Okay. Again, the system views is very similar to the what was on the operational side. For this particular diagram, we're, we're starting with the architecture. And the, since we want to talk about the components this time, we go directly from the architecture to the component. Your top component, it's basically looking for a top component that, that is either uh, um, of a component of the type family of systems, system of systems, or uh, system architecture. So when you build up your hierarchy on the system side, make sure that that top component is one of these uh, three types. And then it, it's basically going to be looking through there and ultimately identifying out of there any of those components from that uh, from the system side, any of the components that are of type system, those are the ones that are actually going to be reported on. And the functions that they perform, that would be those the top level functions, which are of the type integrated root functions. And it's going to identify the inputs, outputs, and triggers for each of those functions. Um, okay. So here is, uh, again, what the SV4 looks like. Okay, in this case, we get the uh, an enhanced functional flow block diagram. Okay, um, and um, Uh, and here's some information about those uh, functions, the items that are being passed uh, in and out of that function, the I.O. for that function, and the basically the uh, out, uh, performer that, or I should say, the system or, or, or that that item is going to. Okay. So there's a uh, S SV4. Okay, taking a look at the system side, just a reminder here that in core, basically both systems and services are represented by component elements in core. The difference being that 
If the component element is of type system, it's a system. If the component element is of type service, that's for the services. Uh, basically, the way we look at service is what determines something is a service is who is performing that function. For example, if you're performing that function, then it would be a service. If you're going out, say, for like a delivery service, you're going out to FedEx, then that's a service. Okay, so uh, on the services side, here's an example of, a, uh, of the uh, SVCV3A, which is a matrix showing which system and which relate are related to which services. So in other words, this uh, system uses this service or this service is used by this system. Okay, so in other words, there is an interconnection between the two. Okay, now for, so for example, here we have our architecture. We're traced through the compo composed of components to get this time the components of type service and look for the interfaces with components of type system. Okay, now a component of type system could be anything that's of type system, external, uh, or human, or facility. It should be external system, not external service. So it's of type system, external system, human, or facility. Okay, let me show you uh, what the service view looks like. In this case, this time it's a matrix. Okay, so here's the various uh, systems, here are the various services, and here are the ones that, so for example, the customers interface with this distribution service, the image management also uh, interfaces with this distribution distribution service and the system uh, image management system also interfaces with this validation service. Okay, here's your uh, element definition table giving each of the various elements and descriptions. Okay, we'll talk a little bit now is about the data and information views. There are basically three, three of these views. The first two views, uh, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Basically, the first two views basically talk about the data elements that are being exchanged. One of the views covers the data elements being exchanged on the operational side. And the other one covers the data elements being exchanged on the system side. So again, we have, for example, here on the operational side, the DIV2, um, which was the old OV7 and ZODAF 1.5. Again, we start with an architecture, go to its composed by to get the performance and see the, how those performers are connected to other performers through need lines, and then what information is being exchanged along those need lines or being transferred by those need lines. Okay? Let me just restore this. Okay. There we go. Okay, so there's your DIV. One of the things, for example, that you can set in that in that document format is whether these views are portrait or landscape. You can change that very simply by changing a parameter there. Okay, so here's the uh, OV, uh, DIV2. So here's the items being exchanged along the operational information, description of that item, its attributes, 
such as the analog or digital, okay, it's priority, accuracy, timeliness, et cetera, some other attributes like size, okay. And the hierarchical references is, for example, if, if the data item is decomposed by another data item, that decomposition will be shown over on, under this column here called hierarchical reference. Okay, as I mentioned before, there is a very similar view doing the, presenting the same type of information over on the uh, system side for both that's being, the information being exchanged between, from system to system and system to services. Okay, there's also now a new set of views called the project views. This brings in project management information into the uh, DODAF views. Okay, so looking at the PV3, which is called the project capability to capability mapping, this is simply as the title describes, a mapping of the various program elements and to what capabilities they're going, these program elements are going to be supplied. Okay? So, um, for example, we start with an architecture. It's implemented by a program element. We're going to be looking at those various program elements, uh, specifically the ones of type task and um, getting out of there the uh, name and description uh, as well as the capabilities that that program element is going to be supplying. I just want to mention there is a, um, a little error in the, um, in, the, in the help document that basically um, forgot to mention that the program elements of type task are the ones that should be mapped to capabilities. That will be corrected in the next service pack. So here's what the um, PV3 looks like. Mm. Okay, so here's the PV3. Okay, in this case, particular case, I augmented it by a copy of the project schedule. So this was just an augmented graphic. Okay, and here is your hierarchy showing you the, pro the program elements and how they are broken down into lower level program elements. And then basically the cap project capabilities that are associated with those program elements. Okay. There are other views that do cover the, for example, the schedule in more detail going over the individual elements that are on the schedule and their start and end dates, etc. And then finally, there is the uh, set of standards views. Okay, the standards views, these are the, this basically is the same as what was in um, JODAF 1.5. In core, we've combined the, the two standard views into one view. And that one view covers, uh, again, starts with, looks at the various uh, certain elements on the system side, such as the, the systems, the interfaces, the functions, um, and then th identifies any standards associated with each of those functions. 